talk about Sunday best we mean it <laughs> because uh, it's an opportunity you know Sunday for, for some of us is uh, an opportunity to just go deeper and engage and that's why we bring programs like this so that you can be able to benefit as we feed mm. the physical man every other day you know mm. we are having dinner lunch mm. breakfast we are running up and down to get money let's not forget about the importance of feeding the spirit, the spirit man. Yeah. And that's exactly what we're doing. Today we are with Notemba Kula. I, I will ask her to speak a bit of... Ho? Huh? Osa. Osa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, she's here with us. Amazing, amazing insights about uh, 
our lives, career, you know, family, identity, and I pray that you'll be able to glean and get something that will be a blessing to you Amen. as well. So here we are. Yeah. Um, I mean, sometimes, <clears throat> and, and I'll want you to speak to the girls. Yes. When you get to that point where you have lost something. Yes. It could be family. It could yeah. be a relationship. Yeah. That sometimes is a reason to, yeah. you know, override or, ch or give you a different identity. That yes. is false. Yes. But thank God because uh, when mm. we stick in there mm. and keep believing in him, he gives mm. us the right identity. Amen. In him. Amen. So Amen. here you are. I mean, you... God has been able to help you. Your identity is now in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you keep growing. How was it for for the relationship now yeah. between your parents? Did you still have a relationship? I have an in, a, a fantastic <coughs> relationship with my parents now. Yeah. Yeah. And it has not always been so. Right. It, one of the things that we have to accept is that healing takes time. Healing takes time. And like anything, if it's going to complete its work, you have to be fully committed. Mm. So don't be like me in terms of how I treat Jim. Okay, I don't even want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Do not <laughs> be like me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in terms of how I treat Jim because I'm going to be at Jim right. January because I'm motivated mm. maybe up to, you know, middle Mid of Feb. Right. But in April, uh, you're not going to see me. From <laughs> April to December, yeah. healing mm. doesn't work like that right. because it is process and it is time. Mm. It requires commitment. Right. It requires truth. Mm. And I talk about this in my book, Push back the darkness that in order to push away the darkness you've got to be committed to truth mm. you have to be able to say you hurt me right you have to oh. be able to say I am disappointed mm. in you mm. the expectations that I had yeah. were not met right. you also have to be able to take it in when other people give you that feedback you have to be committed to truth and say that situation required me to be mature sure. yeah. but I did not mm. rise to yeah. what the situation required of me. And right. you have to say, I apologize for that. Sorry. Yeah. So a commitment <coughs> to truth, I think was helpful for me. And, and I think, especially for us as Christians, because yeah. I feel sometimes we are under such pressure to show that everything is wonderful. Yeah. God is working, the anointing right. is flowing. <laughs> he lit at me beside still waters. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, deep within, <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> it's not happening. Yeah. That's why, you know, Anthony, when I go to these, you know, prophetic meetings yeah. and people say, you know, how do you feel right now? Mm. I feel like if they really ask me how I feel, well, I'm gonna tell you the how, truth, yeah. I feel nothing. Right. <laughs> You know, I wonder sometimes people who say, I, no, I like five that. minutes ago, yeah. they were feeling so many things. Five mm. minutes after, Nothing. I'm healed. Yeah. All the pain right. of 20 years is gone. I'm like, okay, well, bless God for you. Yeah. But my truth is that mm. if I am still struggling, if I still need space, yeah. if I still need time, I'm right. going to be committed to truth. The reason I'm committed to truth is because Christ mm. says I am the way, the, the truth. truth. Right. When I speak truth, I invite Christ. Wow. The devil is the father wow. of lies. Yeah. If you lie, who are you bringing into the equation? The devil. To lie right. and to be under pressure to say it is okay when it is not, yeah. is not going to help you. Right. So we have to be people who are committed to truth. And I think in my journey, being able to say to my parents that, you know what, it was a very painful mm. experience yeah. growing up under a home where the parents could not stay together. I have to tell both of you that. I like that. <laughs> That's a powerful yeah. uh, nugget right yeah. there. Truth. Yeah. And many times when we, we had a series in chat some time yes. back, and the series... The topic of the series, how truly, truly are you? Yes. You know, because yes. every time I, you know, I'll, I'll meet Sarah, my producer. Hey, yeah. how are you? Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. I'm not good. You Many not. times I'm mm -hmm. not good. Mm -mm. So truth is key. It's absolutely important. Uh, in bringing healing. It is. And it that is. really helped you. It was very helpful for me mm. and also to acknowledge where I was not yet ready. Yeah. Because I think sometimes when the damage mm. has been done, you know, my husband is a medical doctor. Right. One of the analogies that he uses is that of a broken arm. Mm. That one of the things that you are told is that you have got to immobilize. Oh. 
you must immobilize. That's why they put a cost. Right. You cannot use prematurely right. what still no. needs to heal. Yeah. And I cannot overemphasize how important mm. that is, especially for gifted people. Mm. Do you know how many people are gifted, how many people are anointed, who use wow. the gift prematurely before they have completely healed? And when you use something prematurely, you actually cause more damage, damage. Yeah. than the original. Yeah, that's true. So now you're going to be told, you know what, we told you yeah. that you needed to put a cast because this thing has got to be set. Yeah. First, we have to set before you can go in motion. Yeah. And I think I, I really took the time to do that. There were many things I was asked to do at my younger stages. People could acknowledge and see that, you know, there's a gift here. Yeah. But like Christ, you know how Christ says, my time has not yet come. Mm. When he speaks to Mary and he says, my time has not yet come. You have to know when your time has come for something and when it, it has not yet come yeah. because that might interfere with your process of healing. So mm. you always have to be patient and allow God to complete the work of healing in lovely, your life. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. So yeah. here you are, um, yeah. Notemba, you, I mean, things are happening. Yeah. You're getting into... Um, you went to the university, one yes. of the best in, <coughs> in, in South Africa, yeah. where we had uh, all these, you know, amazing <laughs> names we get to hear. And uh, God uh, opened ways, yes. amazing career. Yeah. So how do you, and this is something I, w I really want to understand, yeah. uh, the balance between purpose, yes. Um, of course, what you're doing yeah. uh, in terms of your professional career yes, and how you walk that journey mm. Mm. and at the end of it still mm. are successful. Mm. But God is at the centerpiece. I mean, he's the Absolutely. centerpiece of all this. Absolutely. Share, share with us that journey. We get yeah, to I think, you know, Anthony, my, my view is that there is nothing, if you are a believer who is planted who is, you know, who is in the vine, as the scriptures say, yeah. there is nothing that is sacred for you. Every place where God puts you is your pulpit. Right. So this idea that, you know, my family is something else, my job is something else, mm. church is something else, yeah. we really need to dispel that notion because everywhere where God puts us, it is your platform. So when I am at home and I am cooking for my husband, yeah. that is my pulpit. Right. It is my platform. I take it seriously the same way that I take this seriously right. because it is a different aspect of how God has called me to be in ministry. Right. So when you view all of your life mm. as a platform for God to bring light, mm. You don't cut it oh, up yeah. into little pieces. Right. You don't say this is work here. I'm uh -huh. not a, I can't kanda rashaba rashaba <laughs> here. <laughs> I get to work early. I get yeah. to the office and I kanda rashaba right. yeah. in the right office. In there. Yeah, I arrive early yeah. so that by the time people come in, I've You've already sanctified right. the atmosphere and the environment. I have prepared my heart. I've allowed the Holy Spirit to give me the wisdom that I need for the day. Mm. It is not something I do on Sunday. There are no borders. There are no barriers. Right. The entire, you know, a space of my life is a pulpit that I use. Right. And I think that's the approach that has been helpful to me because I have taken every single opportunity and door yeah. that God has opened as a platform for ministry. Yeah. And I think in that way, you know, it has really been um, a, a very rewarding journey. The other thing worth mentioning is that we should not feel guilty for setting priorities mm. right i'm a oh, mother yeah. <laughs> oh no don't feel guilty about it oh, yeah. set priorities right. it is absolutely important yeah. and when it is not your priority don't put yourself under pressure for it that's true when i was a, a, a young mother i've got two teenage children now right my children were a priority and i did not feel guilty for saying unfortunately I am not available. Yeah. I am taking my child to the doctor for their immunization. Right. I'm taking them for a play date. Yeah. I'm actually spending time with my kids because yeah. that's my priority that's at that true. stage. Yeah. So whilst everything is a platform, it will not be to the same level of priority mm. in every season. 
you must know what season you are in. Right. If you are in a season, same thing with marriage. When mm. my husband and I got married, we left the country yeah. because we were prioritizing cleaving. That, right. At we that were point. Yeah. yeah. My priority was cleaving. I'm like, goodbye all you all. <laughs> I need this now. No, I'm, yeah. I'm doing cleaving right now because yeah. I got a future to build with this man. That's true. So it's not going to help on. me to be preaching now in yeah. every women's. I'm not available for women's conferences. Yeah. My platform right now is this man yeah. and is this marriage yeah. because it is going to form the basis for everything else that God is going to do in my life. So I think, you know, setting priorities and not feeling guilty right. when seasons change. Right now, my children, they are teenagers. Yeah. And because they are teenagers, I kiss them goodbye. I'm going to Kenya now. Right. I spent my I time with you. Yeah. Now I need to I shift. My priorities have changed. Come on, I love that. Yeah. Seasons, yeah. times, priorities. Absolutely. And being unapologetic about it. Absolutely. That. And you know what, Natemba? Yeah. I mean, people who really matter, and people who we look up to. Yes. They're very clear about that. Absolutely. Their, their life they is uh, black and white. Yeah. You know, it yeah. is time for me to go play golf. Yes. Guys, mm. thank you. What? Yeah, I'll pray for you when I come yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> and they will go do it. You know, <laughs> you think uh, there's, uh, I mean, we, it's Synergy. all interconnected. Yeah. Your family, yes. your career, yes. and all that. We need to bring yeah. this to an end. Amen. Pushing back the darkness. The darkness. Yes. Uh, tell us a bit about the book. The book um, is really just a passion. It's born out of passion and also my life story. As I was saying uh, earlier, the subtitle says, when you are tired of accepting the unacceptable. Mm. So I had come to a stage where I had recognized, I had accepted a lot of things I should not have accepted. Yeah. And I think if you do that, you will, stay, you, you will stay in a place of darkness. You have to acknowledge that it was not my fault. Yeah. You have got to acknowledge that I'm born in the African continent. It was not my choice. Right. I am not going to blame myself. Mm. I am not going to look down upon myself for things that I I cannot change right so the question that the book answers is how do you get to a place where you are confident enough mm. to put your foot down right. and to draw a boundary yeah. and to say I have accepted and tolerated this and I'm not going to do it any longer what are wow. the tools <coughs> that I need in order to get to that place mm. that's what the book is about wow. Amazing. Yeah? Yeah. And we all desire to be there yes one of the um, um, people who have had an impact in their own way, yeah. and, and it could be controversial, it comes yeah. from your country. Yes. Trevor Noah. Yes. You know? I yes. mean, he's an apologetic. Absolutely. I come from Africa, this is yeah. how we were treated. Yeah. But here I am. Absolutely. You know, making a difference in yeah. the entire world with uh, my yeah. gift. Yeah. So yeah. I, I love it that, um, yes, we were born here. Yeah. You know, in Kenya, we, we are born from, I mean, we have many tribes. Sometimes yes. we say, oh, I come from a minority. I actually come from a minority. Right. But you know what? I didn't choose to, to get yeah. born there. Yeah. My parents. Yeah, you had nothing to do but with But what I can choose mm. is to make a difference. Come on now. With that situation. Come on now. I mean, Come on. I want you to speak to, yeah. to, to ladies. Yeah. I just want you to speak to them. I mean, I just want to speak to not just ladies, yeah. but I want to speak even to us as Africans in general. Right. That the core of the impact that we're going to make in the world is going to come from us embracing the identity that God has given us. Mm. I love that you talked about Trevor Noah and that he has gone <coughs> to the world and right. he is proudly African okay. yeah. and South African. Right. He has retained, it's a small thing, but I love the fact that he has retained his accent. Oh yeah. <laughs> Why do we go to the US, Anthony? Uh. And then after two weeks, we start it's being different. American. Yeah. What is it? What yeah. is it? I'm South and African. Worst case, I mean, yeah. when you're back home, you think, oh, you guys. Yeah. This, why, why do you speak like that? No. No. This That's is who we are. Heritage. This is who we are. Yeah. I mean, I was saying to you earlier that the strength of an impact comes from how concentrated mm. the flavor of something is. Right. So the scriptures are deliberate when they say that we are salt because there's a certain level of concentration yeah. that salt has. Right. And that's why the Bible says if salt has lost its Salty. saltiness, yeah. If it gets diluted mm. beyond yeah. the saltiness, the identity of saltiness, it right. is useless. True. And so I think in this season and in this time, we have got to be more 
proud mm. and take more ownership right. of where we are birthed, the experiences that have shaped us. Yeah. We are not going to belittle who we are and the origins and the foundations from which we come. Right. Because if we do that, we are going to lose our flavor. Mm -hmm. We are going to lose our saltiness. You can never be more American than an American. Forget <laughs> it. Never. It doesn't matter what accent, it doesn't yeah. matter what clothes, what hair. Right. Americans are Americans. You are African. Yes. You, your best you, bet is in, is in being you African. You cannot be more Kenyan. <laughs> No, no, you can't. And, and I cannot. Vice versa. I cannot. Right. So my strength lies in embracing, you know, that identity and proudly yeah. and unapologetically. Oh, come so. on. Yeah. Lovely. How do we get yeah. your book? How my do we book, get you? My book is <coughs> is actually everywhere. Uh, it's in Keswick. Right. Um, you go to Sarit, it's yes. there. It's in the Joshi uh, bookshops. All right. It's also at Naivas. Okay. Actually. Oh, that's so, an easy one. Yeah, <laughs> if you go to any Naivas, yeah. you are going to find the book there. It's also online for All those right. people who are more technologically savvy. So All you right. can go to Amazon and you can get yourself um, an electronic copy of the book. All right. Mm. And you're also on social media. I'm Quite very active. much on social <coughs> media. Uh, let's continue the conversation. I'm not Temba Kula right. on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, Instagram. on Facebook, right. on everywhere. All right. Yeah. And Notemba has a H. N O T H E. Yes. M B A. Yes. Kula. That's Kula, correct. we know. Yes. Yeah. It, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Notemba Kula, get her on social media. Please mm -hmm. go to an Ivers near you and get this book. Yes, you please. You will love it. It yes, has a lot please. of resources. Thank you so much. Thank Natemba, you. It's been such a joy. For making time to be with us. Thank and you. We wish you well. Thank you. Blessings as you go back to South Africa. Yeah. To the do uh, girls. Yes. As well as uh, to your husband. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you and so much. Just one more uh, yeah. <clears throat> punchline in. Yeah, there's a, you know, the scripture that says that God is the author and the finisher of our faith. Yeah. In Kosa Ite Utiko, Kumkali, Nom Kabelelanisi. Your call away too. Oh, I love it. All right. Notemba Kula with us right here on uh, Sunday Best. I believe that has blessed you very amazing, uh, you know, nuggets for your life, even as you desire to push. Man. away the darkness. God bless you. We Man. continue with the amazing music. Barakatere.